Hello, today we're going to be creating a scorched text effect in Photoshop. Rightio, so I'm now in Photoshop and first off I'm going to select the paint bucket tool and fill the background with black. Next select the type tool, click anywhere and type some text. From the character properties icon I can change the font properties, size, weight, style, all that good stuff and I'm going to centrally align this. Once I've done that I'm then going to pop it in the center. Now I can go to edit, down to free transform and I can scale this up a bit holding shift. Next I'm going to right click the text and select blending options. Go down to the gradient overlay, check this, click on the slider and you can pick a preset or just start with the default black to white and then you can double click on the swatches and pick your own colours. So I'm going to start with a dark grey on one side and a light grey on the other. And you can also adjust the angle of the gradient using the dial here. Next I'm going to select bevel and emboss. Make sure the inner bevel is the style and the technique is set to chisel hard. You can then use the sliders and the dials to adjust all of the settings and see your bevel change in real time. The next one I'm going to select is inner shadow and if I adjust the sliders here you can see this gives the text a little bit more depth and helps it feel less flat. The last one I'm going to select is contour and I'm just going to pick one of the presets from the drop down. I can then uncheck and check preview to see how it looks and go up to styles and select new style and then I can save this. So I'm going to type metal and make sure to include the layer blending options, click OK and this is now saved as a preset. So that's a pretty good start. Now I'm going to right click on a texture and open this in Photoshop. Go up to select, down to all, you'll see the marching ants appear, go to edit and copy. I can close this down, hop back into the main document and then paste this in. But before we go any further, this video is sponsored by Envato Elements. And their platform provides creators with millions of assets, unlimited downloads and a commercial license. Whether you're looking for photos, illustrations, textures, brushes, icons, motion graphics or even visual and audio effects like this, well, Envato Elements has you covered. Plus, you can use their 3D asset library to do something like this. All for just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription. Check out the link below. Next, we're going to use Free Transform to adjust the size, position and rotation of this texture. And if I right click on the texture layer and select Create Clipping Mask, you'll see it doesn't do anything. And this is because we have all of those blending options applied. So a workaround is to select the text layer, press Command or Control G to create a group, give the group a name, and then right click the texture again and now create clipping mask. And you can see it's clipped to the text. Now I'm going to go to image, adjustments and hue saturation and drag that saturation slider to the left just to take out a bit of color. I'm then going to change the blending mode to something like overlay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Give the layer a name, metal texture. And then I'm going to add a solid color adjustment layer. I'm going to pick a brown colour for this and then with the layer mask selected press command or control I to invert this, grab the brush tool and here you can see all my delicious brush packs from Envato Elements, they're really good. So I'm going to select one of my ash dust brushes, let's just grab this one here and I'm going to bring the size down a pinch and then I'm going to brush in this texture, oh no, not like that. Okay, so first let's undo that mess, then hold Alt or Option and click between the layers. And this is the shortcut for adding a clipping mask. So now I can brush in this texture in a few select places on the text. And effectively, this is going to act as some rust, my rusty metal text. Well, I think that's sufficiently rusted. Next, I'm going to add another solid color adjustment layer. This time I'm going to go with an orange. Again, add a clipping mask and then change the blending mode to something of your choice. I'm going to go with, I think, hard light. 
And then you can invert the layer mask, select the brush tool, and from the drop down, select one of Photoshop's soft default brushes, and then click and hold shift to illuminate the lower half of the text, adjusting the opacity if it's a little bit punchy. Right, let's open up another texture in Photoshop. And again, copy and paste this into the main document. Make sure it's clipped to the text and then give the layer a name. Now I can adjust the size, position and rotation of this new texture. And now that's done, I'm going to change the blending mode to something like color dodge. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. So now I'm actually going to make the texture a bit smaller and just reposition this on the left side of the text. Duplicate the texture with Command or Control J, and then move this over to the other side. I'm then going to rather destructively select the eraser tool and just erase that join. Next, I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer and use this just to introduce a bit more contrast to the text. And as with everything else, make sure you add a clipping mask. And if I just turn this off and back on, you can see the difference. Now, if I select both textures and press Command or Control E, I can merge these together and I will need to reapply that blending mode. Next, I'm going to open up an image of some fiery ember molten lava stuff. Whatever this is, select all and copy and paste this into the main document. And exactly the same as before, pick a blending mode of your choice and adjust the size, position and rotation if you like. Next, right click the layer and select blending options and holding alt or option, click and drag on the markers to separate them. And this blend if technique can be used to blend shadows and highlights into an image underneath. And the same as before, I'm going to resize this texture to make it a bit smaller, duplicate it, merge them together, and then change the blending mode. Now there's one effect I forgot to include before, so let's right click the text, select blending options, and enable satin. And if I just hide all of the texture for a moment, I can turn satin off and back on so you can see the difference. And if I show all the textures again, you can see how much of a difference this texture work makes. Next, I'm going to take a moment to adjust a few different settings. And then I'm going to add a layer mask to the metal texture. And with the brush tool and black selected, I'm just going to brush away some of that fiery orange texture. And you saw me doing that with a soft brush then. So I'm just going to switch this out for a brush that's a bit more textured. Looking good. Also, this text is still fully editable. So that's a thing, but we're going to undo that. Next, I'm going to open up an image of some cinders. This is going to be for the background, and I'm going to copy and paste this into the main document. And using all of the techniques that we've covered so far, I'm going to take a moment to make the background look awesome, and then we'll come back and focus on the text. So one more thing I'm going to do to the background to really make it stand out is add another curves adjustment layer. And typically I can use this to adjust the blacks, whites, shadows, highlights, but I can also change the channel to red and adjust those same settings for that channel exclusively. You can also do the same for green and blue, and I'm just using this to warm up the entire image overall and give it a very stylized aesthetic. And if I turn this layer off and on, you can see the difference. Now, because I've added a background, I'm going to go back into the blending options and add a drop shadow just to lift the text ever so slightly off the surface. Right now, I'm going to duplicate the orange adjustment layer, right click the layer mask and delete this. Hold command or control over the text icon and click to make a selection and then add a new layer mask. Now I can go up to filter down to blur and select Gaussian blur. You can go ahead and convert this to a smart object, select a blur amount of your choice and click OK. I'm going to change the blending mode to something a little bit more vibrant. So we'll go with hard light. And because it's a smart object, it uses smart filters. So I can go back into that blur effect and make any changes I need to. Add a new layer mask holding Alt or Option. This will hide the contents. Select the brush tool, the color white, brush back in a glow and then adjust the opacity to your liking. Well, it's all looking rather good if I do say so myself. Lastly, select the text and any clipped layers, right click and convert to smart object. Give this smart object a name, we'll go with text, duplicate the layer and hide the bottom one. Then go up to filter, down to distort and select ripple. 
This is so the lower half of the text looks a bit more like molten metal, so you can adjust the settings using the preview, and when you're happy click OK. Next we're going to add a layer mask, and then as before we're going to make sure that this effect only applies to the lower half of the text. So let's just brush that away with black, and if we show the text layer underneath, you can see the top half of the text is unaffected. And because it's a smart filter, I can go back into that ripple effect, make any changes I need to, and click OK. Although that looks terrible, so let's go back. And there we go, so that is how to create super scorched molten text in Photoshop. And if you enjoyed this one, remember you can subscribe for more, ring the bell for notifications, take care, and I'll see you next time.